Hey team, it's Mikey Millions here, and I couldn't be more excited to bring you the latest set of Wall Street Bet's wildest trades. After a grueling market meltdown in March, Donnie, j Pow, and the boys in the plunge protection team dumped cash, coke, and the greatest words like you wouldn't believe into the alley market, bailing out struggling companies and keeping workers on payroll. By the end of March, the plunge protection team kicked into full gear, reversing the market collapse and sending stocks on a glide path to all-time highs just 10 weeks later. Dubbed the Trump pump, the speed of the market's bounce was unprecedented. The most rapid recovery in history slaughtered armies of bears and caught cash gang on its back foot. Meanwhile, the bulls who put more skin into the long game came out richer than ever. Gentlemen, and the three or four ladies who tune into these videos, it is my honor to present to you the most bald in trades of the Trump pump. We're gonna warm up with something nice and light, and for that, we turn to ABC123DTF for a profoundly classic Wall Street Bets trade. Our man recognized something interesting in the market. He noticed that when American Airlines stock rises, it tends to also rise more the next day. The realization was groundbreaking, and based on this profound and extensive DD, ABC123DTF pulled a 200 IQ move. On Wednesday, June 3rd, he bought 170 American Airlines calls at the $14 strike with two days to expiration, expecting more upside through the week's end. At the time, American Airlines was trading for $12, putting the strike on these calls more than 16% out of the money, so they were trading dirt cheap. This trade therefore cost him a measly $340, but DTF was confident it would turn into something much greater. And boy, did CEO Doug and the Sky Boys come through. Out of nowhere, American Airlines dropped the big announcement that they were going to increase their number of flights from 20% of the pre-COVID schedule in May up to 55% of the pre-COVID schedule in July. Ignoring the fact that major airlines have averaged 23 passengers per domestic flight and are hemorrhaging as much as $300 million a day to expenses, American Airlines putting some meat on its skeletal flight schedule sent shares up 40% into the stratosphere. By Thursday afternoon, that $340 bet paid out over 21 grand in profit for a gain of 6,000%. That's enough for over a thousand shares of American Airlines, or one bangin' ass weekend in Vegas. Much respect for the mile high trade, DTF. Let's check out fall in trade number four. By mid-April, the worst weeks of the market were well behind us, but the impacts of Kung Flu were felt far and wide. As businesses closed and going to the grocery store felt more like a supply run than a shopping trip, more consumers than ever were pushed to their couches to watch shows on Amazon Prime, order a bunch of crap off of Amazon, and suck down Doritos they bought on Amazon Fresh. Basically, more people than ever needed Papa Bezos in their life, and Redditor Anon Rose was not about to pass up the opportunity to get in on the hustle. On Wednesday, April 8th, Anon Rose took a nice $34,000 stack of cash and threw it into Amazon calls expiring in May. At the time of purchase, Amazon stock was trading for about 2,040 and was flirting with a new all-time high, but that glass ceiling didn't last long. On Tuesday the 14th, Amazon announced that demand was so high it had to hire more workers and was making literally $11,000 per second. In response, the stock broke out to clear skies and never looked back. Anon Rose flipped Amazon several times to higher and higher strikes over the next few days as the stock continued its moonshot to over $2,400, putting our man's account value at over half a million. The whole play took eight days. On April 16th, Anon Rose closed the position and rode off into the sunset with the loot. Some people criticized him for selling too soon, but all of those guys were eating microwaved chicken nuggets with ketchup while Anon Rose enjoyed chicken selects with Jack Daniels sauce and strippers. And here's the real fun part. If Anon Rose did hold those calls, they would have expired worthless as they were still $200 out of the money on expiration. To go even further, Anon Rose sold his calls at literally the best possible time, after which their value steadily decreased. Enjoy the prime capital, Anon Rose. Let's head over to the airport to hit up ball in trade number three. We're going international for our next big play and landing in the wonderful world of Legionnaires and spaghetti. If there's one country out there that knows it's cappuccino, it's Italy, and our 25-year-old Guido friend Stop Fat Forever felt confident enough to put his money where his cannoli is. At 48 euros a share, 
StopFap fully committed his entire 235,000 euro or $265,000 life savings into China's junior varsity Starbucks at the absolute top in January 2020. Within days, Luckin Coffee was bleeding off of its mid-January high, costing StopFap money right from the get-go as the Kung Flu took root in mainland China. But the real kill shot came on April 2nd, when Luckin Coffee told the SEC that it was conducting an internal investigation into how heavily its own CEO was cooking the books. According to Luckin, the company had reported at least $230 million in fabricated sales. With the realization that at least 15% of Luckin's sales were fake news, plus the fact that the company was still unprofitable even after cooking the books, investors went full Nanjing on the stock. Luckin Coffee opened that morning down 75%, but StopFat clenched his cheeks and held his shares with diamond hands, riding the stock all the way down to a 95% loss and delisting from the NASDAQ. On the negative side, this resulted in a loss of over a quarter million dollars, which sent him back to the plebeian cast. On the positive side, StopFat pulled over 5,000 Reddit Karma and made the front page of Market Watch, making Wall Street bets all the more notorious. Well done. SPQR, Fapless. Now, let's explore a timeless fable in Ball and Trade number two. For our next hot play, we turn to the story of a guy aptly named Wall Street Bust, who made his first mark on the community by losing $54,000 on Lulu calls back in December, branding him with a shameful flair forever. Whereas a normal person might take the L, get a job, and invest in his company's 401k, Wall Street Bust is no ordinary man. In spite of his flair of shame, Wall Street Bust entered the new year with an unrelenting vigor. Like many other fans of making money, our hero jumped into Tesla at the end of January when it had just begun its meteoric rise toward $1,000. Obviously being a man of means, Wall Street Bust laid down about 210 dollars on Tesla calls at the $700 strike expiring in May. Although the contracts were long dated, Tesla's rapid climb meant no waiting was necessary. Within a week, Tesla was trading for new highs just below $900. And on February 4th, Wall Street Bust crowned himself the world's newest millionaire. But this is Wall Street Bets. There's no such thing as cashing out at a million. Wall Street Bust was just getting started. After a minor miscalculation on AMD that cost him 75 grand back in February, the champ got back in the game on May 25th, dropping 220,000 on Zscaler calls at the $75 strike in anticipation of a solid earnings report three days later. With some luck, and possibly a crystal ball, Wall Street Bust's earnings bet was spot on. While Zscaler was expected to earn two cents a share, the company more than tripled that figure with a seven cent per share tally. In response, Zscaler shares went from $75 to nearly $100 within 24 hours, sending those $75 strikes deep in the money. Another $372,000 of gains hit our man's account. With some extra coins in his pocket, Wall Street Bust went in one more time the following week just to top it all off. But making money is exhausting. So rather than dump multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars into a new play, Wall Street Bus took it slow on June 4th, dropping just 21 grand into 2,000 FD calls on Carnival Cruise Lines, just looking for some extra icing on his very expensive cake. Well, the market had other ideas, and with an unexpectedly baller jobs report and a healthy shot of J-Pow's special powder, Carnival Cruise Lines went sailing straight to the Cayman Islands for a port of call in Tendy Town. Carnival rallied over 20%, and that $21,000 set of FDs multiplied itself more than 20 times over into just a touch under half a million dollars. Let there be no doubt, Wall Street Bust is a man possessed by the spirit of the market. And now, the moment we waited for. Let us hail the most ballin' baller of them all. After a decade with bulls firmly in control of the market, Bear Gang held the new year with a great hunger. Hungriest of all was the trader known as If I Was Hayek, who conjured the name of a 20th century economist known for going hard in the paint. After suffering a slow decline in portfolio value since 2016, If I Was Hayek turned things around in early 2020. Having caught bear fever in the early days of beer viruses rampage through China, our man looked ahead at bad things to come for the American leisure travel industry. Expecting cruises and theme parks to get rocked when COVID-19 stormed the beaches of California, if I was Hayek took his account's remaining $150,000 balance and threw down for puts on a bunch of things, but especially Disney and Carnival. When Kung Flu came through the US and shut down businesses left, right, and center, 
If I was Hayek's early investment into puts paid off tremendously. His account value clawed at the sky, spiking north like a fine needle, ready to sow our man's six-figure net worth into the clouds. Within days of COVID's debut on American soil, If I was Hayek's account touched $4 million. With an account value like that, he could have just bought 160,000 shares of SPHD based on that day's prices to collect over 200 grand a year in dividend for doing literally nothing. But this isn't some R beer money club. This is Wall Street bets. Cashing out before $10 million isn't an option. If I was Hayek, didn't sell a single contract. Our hero marched down the warpath with up-armored puts in tow, rooting for the continued collapse of Western capitalism. For his transgression, he earned a new kind of reward. Agony. By the end of March, the plunge protection team was firing on all cylinders, bailing out aggrieved industries, dishing out Trump bucks, and paying companies not to fire their workers. The rally that followed was immense. If I was Hayek stubbornly refused to let his puts go, he was convinced that the market would see through the ruse and start tumbling Cost once again. Him. It was a mistake he'd live to regret. Just as his account value rose into a mountain so steep that only Skyrim horses could climb it, our man's account plummeted through the floor, dragging his ego down with it. On April 23rd, exactly one month after his account reached its peak at 4 million, if I was Hayek's diamond hands held nothing but the crumbled dust of his puts and a 92.8% all-time loss. Although he tried to rationalize his decision to hold, our hero was clearly in the bargaining stage of grief, and his pain was palpable. From wage slave to multimillionaire to pauper in the span of one month, there is truly no greater autist than if I was Hayek. Your grace, it is my honor to be a part of your coronation. Please accept this crown and take your place on the throne in the most ball and trades of the Trump pump. Who wants to be king? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As the dank trades keep flowing, so will the exciting coverage on this channel. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the action. I hope to see you all next time. Happy trading and thanks for watching.